Welcome to Gurukul Lectures. In this part of my ongoing series of outcome based education, we will be talking about various insights of accreditation. Higher education accreditation is a quality assurance mechanism in which an external body evaluates the programs and the operations of the higher learning education institutes. These organizations also assess the degree programs offered by the HEIs and the assessment would decide if the institute has met the accreditation agency's requirement or not. Accreditation is required for the universities in India with an exception of those established by an act of parliament. Without accreditation, no higher education institute in India will grant the degrees or claim to be a university. So, there are a number of higher education accreditation bodies in India including UGC, NAC, NBA, AICTE. There are some regulating organizations under which we also count Department of Higher Education, University Grant Commission, National Assessment and Accreditation Council and National Board of Accreditation. In terms of the professional councils, we also name the AICTE, the Bar Council of India, the Central Council of Homeopathy, the Central Council of Indian Medicines, the Dental Council of India, the Distance Education Bureau, the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, the Indian Nursing Council, the Medical Council of India, the National Council of Teachers Education, the Pharmacy Council of India, the Rehabilitation Council of India. In terms of the institute, we have it at the central level, the state level, the deemed private university and other autonomous institutes. You, When you talk about the institutions by type, we have agriculture, architecture, business, dentistry, engineering, forestry, Islamic law, medicine, nursing, pharmacy, teaching and veterinary. In terms of the institutes by the state, we call upon Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Bihar, Chandigarh, Chhattisgarh, Delhi, Goa, Gujarat and Haryana. Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Odisha, Puducherry, Punjab, Rajasthan, Sikkim, Tamil Nadu, Tripura, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand and the West Bengal. Now let us talk about the Accreditation Council that is the National Assessment and Accreditation Council in detail. It is a government organization in India that assesses and accredits the higher education institutes that is the HEI. It is an autonomous body funded by University Grant Commission and it is headquartered in Bengaluru. NAC was established in the year 1994 in response to the recommendations of the National Policy in Education 1986. This policy was to address the issues of deterioration in the quality of education and the program of action 1992 laid out the strategic plans for the policies including the establishments of an independent national accreditation body. Consequently, NAC was established in the year 1994 with its headquarters in Bengaluru. Broad classifications of eligibility requirements are there. The units of evaluation with the weightage and the various criteria is mentioned. The grading system is the result of the evaluation done by this body. Now, the eligibility requirement for the accreditation process to take place in terms of private deemed to be universities must be accredited by the government or UGC. Furthermore, these institutions must have the full time regular students as well as the full time teaching faculty. In addition, the research programs must be included 
in the course curriculum. The campus that will be evaluated and accredited must be located in India. If these affiliated colleges are a part of a private deemed to be university reporting to the University Grant Commission, they may not be considered independent institutions for the purpose of accreditation. At the time of accreditation, these members would be expected to be present on the main campus. If these colleges are not affiliated with any university, the program offer must be approved by the organizations as the Association of Indian Universities that is AIU or any of the government entity. The eligibility requirements for the accreditation process to take place private deemed to be university must be accredited by the government and the university grant commission. Furthermore, these institutions must have the faculty etc. on a full time basis and the campus etc. which is evaluated must be you know there in India. Now let us see if you could relate yourself with the situation your internal quality assessment cell on the toes in sometimes spirited activities or when your infrastructure is restored abruptly or when your dull library is moved towards automation. All these clearly indicates that the National Assessment Accreditation Council is around the corner. That is, it keeps the organization moving and moving towards benchmarking, moving towards excellence. So there are lot of good endeavors which IQAC of your college will take. It will restore the infrastructure. The infrastructure will be in place, restored, broadened, expanded and widened and your library will be slowly from manual to the automation mode. So that means it is a very, very clear indication that slowly the organization is trying to get themselves accredited or it must be in their second cycle. So now coming back to the point, NAC is an autonomous body that came into vogue by the initiatives taken by the University Grant Commission. NAC's journey of rating the Indian colleges started in the year 1994. It is definitely an autonomous body. NAC's main duty is to assess and get accredited all the higher education institutes across the country. Universities deemed to be universities come under NAC's limits. Back then in the year 1990, the NAC was still an alien. But now in the year 2019, NAC has been up on its grading line, much appreciated for its transparency in measuring the institutes for their quality. What is NAC? accreditation. Assessment and accreditation initiatives A and A of the NAC is a unique process. It adopts a unique review process with a combination of quantity evaluations, promotions, sustenance, initiatives to offer the grades to the institutes and we would also learn here down the line what are the various steps, what are the various structures, what are the various statements does NAC consider for the purpose of assessment. If you were unfamiliar with what NAC stands for, it is the acronym of National Assessment and Accreditation Council. It spells out the excellence, the credibility and the relevance all in one hand. Holding a NAC's accreditation symbolizes a great standard of excellence across your institution operations. With NAC, institutions get the opportunity to square its efficiency, realize its highlights and the challenges and work on improvement plans for the betterment. What does NAC stands for? Getting into NAC's history is right away of knowing it better. Hence, let us have a look on the history part. 
We are aware of the rapid growth route of the higher education has taken post independence. The primary, secondary, technical education are no exception. With the budding of the private institutes, there came many fancy courses that lacked validation. So, upholding the quality and the relevance of the higher education was really a big question. Now, it is exactly at this time that the National Policy on Education 1986, the Plan of Education and Action 1992, it propagated the need for an independent national accreditation body that works towards assessing and accrediting the higher education institutes in India. The idea is to basically sort out the pitfalls in the few areas in the HEIs in India. To organize the periodic assessment and the accreditation of the institutes, units, specific academic programs, projects of the higher education, to promote the quality of teaching learning and the research in the higher education academic environment, to stimulate the areas like self-evaluation, accountability, autonomy and the innovations, to get involved in a research studies consultancy and the training programs, to foster the stakeholder collaboration for the quality evaluation, promotion and sustenance. NAC maintains or upholds the quality of HEIs through collaboration, stakeholder involvement by bringing more accountability, transparency and the self-evaluation system. To appear for NAC, an institute should actually be considering eligibility. Here are NAC eligibility criteria. Both university colleges can appear for NAC provided they comply with the following terms and conditions. All universities from central, state, private and deemed to be an institution showing of national importance. The institution's campuses should be very much in the country to proceed with the assessment and accreditation that is A and A process. All colleges, institutes that are constituent of affiliated to, recognized by universities or autonomous colleges are considered for assessment and accreditation process. Any department, school or the center of university can apply for NAC accreditation process. The NAC accreditation process of quality assurance is similar to those are followed by other quality assurance agencies present worldwide. According to the revised accreditation framework popularly called as RAF, R -A -F, NAC has a timely step-to-step -step ICT enabled accreditation process. The new processes of student satisfaction survey, data verification and validation that augments the full objectives of the NAC. We could also feel the pressure to get the NAC accreditation. We therefore have broken these big processes into the seven steps without affecting its flow. The first is the Higher Education Institute's registration in the NAC website. Institutional Information for Quality Assessment IIQA SSR that is the self-study report submission on the acceptance of IQA on the rejection an institution has two attempts to resume the IIA form within a year. Then proceeding to data validation and verification that is DVV, process and pre-qualifier score. Preparation towards the student satisfaction survey that is triple S, the on-site peer team visit by NAC. NAC announces the institutional grading 
and of course the criteria are split up as so well that it involves the institutional stakeholders working together. The whole of the NAC process if done manually could wreck your time and effort and as well as mentioned earlier that is why the institutions they have education ERP software where in the process of accreditation, upgradation, revision etc is very very easy. NAC criteria requires a load of reports, the report of big 5 years and those oodles of data and documentation are sure to take your time. Compilation of all of them by yourself might seem a possible task but we have to be very watchful so that the report which we make are error free that might come along and seriously if we are not serious about the compilation part we can put the organizational credibility at bay. The institutional resource planning software or the campus management system that you choose should streamline and improve the whole institutional process towards getting accredited. Right from the administrational operations to the academics, the outcome based education curriculum, the library management, everything would be refined especially in the NAC process. In the steps like IIQA and SSR, a software intervention would really help you the most. Right here in IIQA data submissions to check for the statutory requirement authority that is SRA, compliance and while uploading the supporting documents, the overall aspects have to be very very pertinent and clear. The same goes for the uploading the self study report files and the data while preparing to submit the documents relating to the annual quality assurance report that is AQAR as per the proper guidelines and the parameters of NAC. NAC takes a clear peep into the quality aspects of higher education institute especially of the assessment. Assessment and accreditation that is A and A have outlined well strategized quality initiatives, quality sustenance and the quality enhancement measures that keep the NAC vision focused and intact. Now there are on site observations to monitor and evaluate the institutions functioning, the self evaluation process, involvement of the stakeholders in SSR submissions all show NAC's focus on assessment. What are the NAC criteria and the weightages? NAC critically focuses on getting a criteria based assessment into the following seven areas of higher education. The first is curriculum aspects. Criteria number two is teaching and learning evaluation. Number three is research, consultancy and expectations and extensions. Criteria number four is infrastructure and learning resources. Criteria number five, student support and progression. Criteria number six is governance, leadership and management. Last but not the least, criteria number seven is institutional values and the best practices. So NAC has these seven parameters and the total marks grading is for 1000 marks. The 1000 marks is divided into all these seven, three, uh, seven criteria which are very very pertinent and they envelop 360 degree development of an institute as far as upholding the quality standards are concerned right from the development of curriculum to the teaching and learning process to the research to the infrastructure to the student support to the governance and to the institutional values and the best practices. So, owing to these seven parameters, the accreditation is done. What are NAC criteria and weightages? We have seen the list of the seven criteria. 
All these criteria have a list of key indicators and the matrices under them. We would like to repeat here that NAC has grouped the HEIs into universities, into the autonomous and the third category is affiliated or the constituent colleges and the weightages and the marks they differ as per these three categories. Naming them again, the first is the autonomous, the second is the affiliated or the constituent college and third is the accreditation and assessment of a university. NAC has distributed different weightages to these three seven categories of institutes based on their focus and the types. So basically NAC grading depends on two criteria. First peer team report, two institutional grading. The former is the qualitative report of the outcomes that is objective in nature that is submitted upon the visit of the peer team visit. The later is a quantitative report of the outcome that is based on the seven criteria that is the cumulative grade point average CGPA, the letter grade and the performance discriminator. So basically when you talk about the peer team visit, there is the formation of those qualitative parameters. The qualitative parameters are built in about 500 words, all the qualitative parameters are validated by the peer team report visits. So when they visit your college or institution or the constituent college or the university, they have the inspection of those qualitative parameters that is about 500 words which you have uploaded on the NAC website for the validation. So their primary job is to first scrutinize, see and validate those qualitative parameters. You may ask that CGPA and the letter grade that are the certifications that are conferred by the NAC at the end of accreditation and assessment process. The letter grade is a consolidation of the institutional quality level along with its performance and accreditation status. All these are purely a result of CGPA scored by the assessment process. So as you can see on the screen, Below is the image that helps you understanding the NAC grading system. If you get a score of 3.5A to 4, that means your status is accredited and the letter you get is A++. That means overall institution is really performing well in terms of the quality standards. Second in the ranking and the grading is 3.26 to 3.50. Here you get A plus and your status is also the accredited. That means it is a shade lesser than the institutions with A plus plus. But yes, A plus is also a very good score as far as the A and A process is concerned. Followed by this is 3.01 to 3.28. Here the institutions get A. If you get A, that means you are pretty uh, good in terms of your upholding the quality standards. If you get between 2.76 to 3, you are a B++ followed by 2.51 to 2.75, you are B+. That is, you must be having some issues relating to your infrastructure, etc. Followed by B, which is up to 2.50. If you are below 2 or 2, you get uh, a score called C. In C grade also you get a certificate of you get accredited but yes if you are less than 1.50 you get D that means you are not accredited. This is a very very bad symbol and the signal and the grading owing to which probably you have to shut your organizations. The organizations which are not having those quality standards have no right to exist in the future. So it is primarily those organizations to, should stop working. Otherwise, you are playing with the children, you are playing with the careers of the children and the future students. That means you are not having the good quality uh, standards with you under which you are working. Now, what is NAC accredited A++? This makes a special mention. NAC new grading system qualifies the higher education institutes with a letter grade status. With a time tested matrix, 
patterns and procedures. It is indeed tough for all the higher education institutes to aspire and get A++ grade from NAC. The evidential data submissions add to 70% of the total score. The peer team visit or the physical verification gives the qualitative contribution of 30%. This is the revised accreditation framework that is 70 and 30. 70% 70 uh, you get you get marks on the online submissions and 30% for the physical verification that is the peer team visit. To be more precise, higher education institutes with their cumulative grade point average that is the CGPA ranging from 3.76 to 4. The achieved letter grade is A++. They are said to have achieved their highest grade of accreditation in the seven criteria. Only 4% of the Indian educational institutes are accredited with A plus grades. So, overall we can see that number of organizations which are getting accredited are more compared to those who are having a highest grade that is A plus plus, A, A plus and B plus plus and B plus. What is this? That means we are lagging behind in terms of the quality standards and we all have to work hard to achieve it. The higher education institutes that falls between a CGPA of 2.76 to 3 fall under B B plus plus category. Similarly, the NAC grievance redressal and the fee structure is also very very important parameter. The NAC processes involves a partnership approach between the NAC team and the institution that is being assessed. The process here hence is believed to be transparent, clear and complying with NAC's values and the notions. Irrespective of these, there are chances for grievance to occur. Grievance materialize when the institution is not happy with the status issued by NAC. To deal with this, NAC has a very clear grievance redressal guidelines as a new mechanism to add aggrieved institutions. We would like to mention here that the mechanism of appeal process is similar to the existing one. There are new revisions made, no new revisions are made in this under the revised uh, accreditation framework. But if there are uh, any in the future, definitely they will be updated on the NAC website but immediately the NAC announces its status and if the institution is not happy, they can uh, you know they are not happy they can write a letter of grievance which could uh, you know it could request a letter of intent. This appeal requesting the criteria wise scoring should reach NAC within 30 days upon receiving the letter intimating the accreditation status from the NAC. That is if the result is announced within a month's time you have to report that you are unhappy with the results etc. This appeal should be submitted with a non-refundable fees of about 20,000 inclusive of 15% service tax because here the expertise and the intellectual people are again required to review the process. On receiving this letter, appeal of committee of assessment and accreditation takes the charge and this would then mean taken into the executive committee who is fact uh, his uh, you know word will be final. So, all these parameters I hope uh, the things of uh, NAC accreditation are very clear to you how the assessment take place, what is the process, what is the meaning, what are the regional agencies, what are the local agencies. So, all these things uh, they all help in the A and A process that is assessment and accreditation process which is the need of today to uphold the quality standards of all the higher education institutes.